big hug. Ah, oh, yeah. Hello. Do you remember me? <laughs> ah, fucking ah, oh, it's so awkward. Right, 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 my friends. Albie, please help me because I don't know how to start this video and it's very annoying. Does not give a shit. <laughs> he literally looked at me like, bitch, I don't care. Um, hello. I'll give you another hug. <laughs> sorry, sorry, sorry. Hello everybody and welcome back to my channel. Today we are gonna do a mental health Oh, yeah, strong man. Q and A. I asked for some questions over on YouTube. I actually used a device that YouTube gave me. Um, well done. And Instagram. If you don't follow me on Instagram, follow me on Instagram. That's where I'm most active. So you know, it's your choice. You can do it if you want. If you don't, fine. You can follow me on Twitter instead. <laughs> That is where I, where I moan about my life. Um, no, not moan. That's why I'm like... Instagram's like my... Live, living my best life. Like, I have been out here living my best life. And Twitter's more like... Will you still love me when I'm this, this life is real and I've got to deal with it. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> so the first question I got um, was in relation to the CBD oil that I spoke about in a previous video and it is Does the CBD oil really work for you? I'm shaking So I've been using CBD oil now for Probably around three months. Um, I made a video before and I hadn't used it all for that long But I've been using it for three months. I Can see the benefits so 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 much um it's really weird because cbd can be used for so many different things like if you've got pain anxiety insomnia like it is from the hemp plant so um some people are like mm, x drugs no it's totally legal it's totally legal but um it's from the hemp plant but it's the non-psychoactive part of it so it doesn't have any THC in it it only has CBD in it so basically you don't get high from it so that, that's the bottom line I personally use CBD before I go to bed because I find that it makes me quite sleepy and drowsy and this time last year I was um, really struggling with in insomnia now I sleep so well like I sleep like seven hours a night Undisturbed, I've got a Fitbit which tells me how good I sleep. Um, so the CBD oil really, really helps me with that. And when I'm at home and I'm feeling anxious, it also really helps me because I used to be, I used to be, I used to be addicted to lorazepam, which is a benzodiazepine drug. I would take up to like four or five milligrams a day and still be an anxious mess um, and then I had to kind of withdraw from it because I was addicted to it for a few months and I feel like if I'd had CBD which is a natural way of reducing anxiety I feel like I would have benefited from it so so much um, so I used the oil, let me go get it I use the Provacan oil and basically what I do is I get it and it comes with a little dripper as you can see and I get some of it and I put it under my tongue and normally I would use <laughs> one minute I wait around a minute for it to go down and then I can talk properly. <laughs> I normally use around two or three drops 
um, before bed but I'm not going to do two or three jobs now because it's going to make me sleepy and that's just... I can't do that, it's 9 o'clock in the morning. <laughs> but I was really interested in... I know I'm going on a bit of a tangent with this but I was really interested into why CBD oil works because it really does work for me. Um, I don't rely on benzodiazepines at all anymore which is absolutely mental for me so the CBD from Provacan really just oh my god it just helps me so much so I was really interested into why and let me let me read from my notes because I wrote this down because I thought it was in interesting um, so I found I found like a really long worded scientific way of describing how CBD oil works instead um, I'm gonna try and break it down to you so in basic term CBD is thought by researchers to block the absorption of serotonin in your brain so it blocks the absor absorption of it so there's more serotonin and that's really interesting because I'm on antidepressants and that is what antidepressants do as well like SSRIs they do exactly that so yeah, that's basically what I found out and I felt, because obviously this is a mental health channel, I thought that was really interesting because if you are on antidepressants or anxiety medication and you find that you are reliant on it, sometimes it's good to look at other options and see if they can work for you. Um, so I use this religiously um, and like I said, I managed to get a discount code from Provacum, so if you use code MARIE you will get 15% off their products um, and they have so many different products on their website go and check them out they have everything from like edibles to oils which is what I use so I use the oil but I really want to try the edible so I think I'm gonna like get that next time um, uh, they do vapes juices if you vape so yeah it's really really cool uh, so yes <laughs> after that long tangent CBD oil does work for me the next question is, do you, do you think that going back into education to could make you relapse? That is one thing that I am very worried about. If you don't know, then I'm going back and doing my A-levels because when I was 16, I... 17, sorry, I dropped out of school, um, which was four years ago um, because of my mental health and I didn't complete my A-levels and ever since then I've been, it's been a goal of mine to go back and complete them because I think it's really important as a stepping stone to get me where I want to go in the future. What do I think it'll make me relapse? I think I'm gonna get stressed and I'm gonna be under pressure and that is completely normal. So I think I would have to just keep reminding myself that it is so normal to feel these emotions like everyone does just because you have a mental illness doesn't mean that you feel things you might experience th things a bit more intense but you will still experience the same emotions I don't think I can ever let myself get to that point again um, where I and, and when I talk about relapse in this situation I'm talking on a grand scale like of having a breakdown um i really don't think i will because i am doing them staggered so i had the option to do all three at once or do them like one by one and i think i'm going to do one this year and then two next year so so yeah I really, fingers crossed, fingers crossed guys that I don't relapse. This is a question that I get so, so much and I just wanted to like talk about it a bit and it's what happens when you go to A&E for self-harm or for a mental, mental Ill health problems. So many people ask me this question, like what happens when you go to the doctor, what happens when you go to A&E, so it really depends on where you go. Um, if you go to a doctor then they're more likely to prescribe you medication or refer you to like a mental health service like adults or CAMS or whatever in your country it is. Um, but if you go to A&E 
like obviously you have to you have to wait the time that everyone else does it, it, in my experience you have to so in my experience I'll just step go through the stages of what happens so you go in you tell them that you've self-harmed um, you sit down in the waiting room then they triage you um, which is basically where they kind of like assess what is what's going to be needed so they say where is the self-harm what did you use and does it need any like what's the word and does it need any like what's the word um honestly cannot remember the word for it like does it need to be stitched or what is that word there is a word for it you, you know what I mean, you know what I mean. Then you go back into the waiting room, wait a bit longer, then they call your name. And I'm very, very, very fortunate in that every time that I've gone to Amy for mental health, I have never felt judged. I have never felt, obviously I felt uncomfortable because it is an uncomfortable situation. Um, but I've always had very understanding and nice people Deal, deal with me um so i've never felt like no one's ever said anything like rude or ignorant to me so i'm very lucky in that respect um not lucky because obviously you know what i mean like i'm fortunate enough to not have had bad situations with doctors or nurses um in a and e um and then basically you'll see a doctor or something and they will um, dress your wound or um, stitch it or steri strip or glue it or you know deal with it I don't know <laughs> I don't know I don't want to give all these like things but I don't know they'll deal with it and then they'll probably offer you to see the mental health team so you'll probably have to wait for the mental health team to come and just assess you whether you're safe enough to go home whether you need intervention um, whether you need to be referred whether you need medication things like that um, so yeah that's kind of what happens when you go to A&E for self-harm how does your family slash boyfriend react to relapses I often feel more shameful after I tell them um, they react really how would I describe it? So they react how I would expect them to react and that is that they get sad obviously about it, they don't like it, um, but they don't ridicule me for it. They now understand that it's part of an illness, part of something greater as opposed to it's just me doing that. Um, my mum often gets worried that it's gonna come with a bigger problem so that it's like the start of me going downhill um, so I always have to reassure her that like no it was just a relapse it was just one thing like it was just a blip I'm still good I'm, I'm still working on myself it's fine um, but yeah they react that way and I'm very fortunate again to have people around me who do understand or at least try to understand what I'm going through did you ever tell your managers about your mental health issues? How did they react? Um, I, <laughs> what was that? <laughs> um, did I ever tell my managers? Uh, no, but they just found out because I ended up in hospital. That's happened twice. Um, so my first manager was so lovely. Um, he, he even like rang me when I was in hospital which was really bad but um, he, on his side that was really nice um, and like they were really respectful of it they never they never treated me any differently for and I loved my second manager because he was really like he's not my manager anymore and it makes me want to cry like I just loved him so much and he's gone <laughs> 
so sad. Like, why do people leave? <laughs> I really, really respected him and loved talking to him because he would ask me questions about mental health and just be like, I don't get it. Like, I don't understand. Like, he'd literally be like, I don't understand how you can wake up in the morning and think I really just don't want to be on this earth anymore. And for me, talk, being able to talk in a really like natural and normal way was really important because he was obviously interested in how I was doing and he'd always check up on me and make sure that I was okay. Um, but also like when I had a lot of time off, they invited me back. They didn't say like, oh, your job is on the line kind of thing. They always invited me back with open arms and even though like my attendance is freaking awful at work, um, it's something, it's not supposed to be like over 2% and mine is like 64% or something ridiculous like that. And the, even the store manager, when, because normally you'd have to, basically, basically I'm going on a tangent with this, but basically normally you'd have to go to like HR because your attendance is so bad, but with me and working at Tesco's, they have just every single time just been like, hey, look, it wasn't your fault, you're back now, let's go. And working for Tesco has been such, so lovely for me. That's why I still work there. And yeah, I'm proud to work there because they're lovely people. Shout out to Tesco. So, um, the last one is, oh, it just breaks my heart. So how do I find myself after being ill for us a long time? And I totally understand what that means and how that can affect your life so much is that you become, you become your illness. Your, your illness overtakes everything in your life and it dictates what you do and how you react and all of these things so that when you're no longer being fully controlled by your illness, you don't know yourself as a person. Um, I went through this in like 2017, I'd say, and I really struggled with knowing. I, I used to say to my CPN, like, I just don't know what I like and what I don't like. Like, I don't know who I am. I don't know as a person who I am. And that's a really difficult thing to try and solve. The way that I did it though was, firstly, I know this sounds stupid, but I did just try and find out what I liked and what I didn't like, um, because a lot of my opinions were based on other people's opinions and I didn't want that anymore. I wanted to know what do I like. The second thing I did was I envisioned the person that I wanted to be and I labelled that person so I wanted to be reliable, I wanted to be stable, I wanted to be consistent, I wanted to be happy, I wanted to you know have friends and be able to go out and not feel anxious and be able to hold down a job and go back to education. Like I envisioned the person that I wanted to be and work towards that because having something in mind is makes it a lot easier to actually fulfill and if you're working towards being a better person um a person who is smashing recovery and really trying fighting for it then it becomes a lot easier you i don't think that you can really put like a time limit on how long it will take for you to find yourself again but just know that if you carry on fighting against your illness, like listening to your illness and doing the opposite of what it's telling you, you will get there in the end, I promise. Like, you will find who you are. I didn't think that I'd ever find out the person that I want to be. And slowly but surely, I'm getting to be a person that I think is good and acceptable and the person that when I was in hospital I dreamt of just being able to do the things that I'm doing now so I don't know if that really answers the question but that's kind of my 
take on it so i hope that helps but that is the end of the guani i really hope you took something from this video um please comment down below how you're doing in my last video it was so I, I freaking loved it because everyone was commented how they were doing and other people were replying to them saying like hold on like stay strong and it was just such a community that I felt so strongly about and I, I really loved so comment down below how you're doing let other people know help other people out I'll be reading the comments I'll be liking them I'll be replying to them um, and yeah, if you are not already subscribed, then subscribe. I try and upload Monday and Thursdays. This is gonna be my goal for December, is to try and upload every Monday and Thursday. So hold me to it, and if I don't do it, then shout at me on Twitter. But yeah, I'm gonna love you and leave you. Please stay safe, and I will see you soon. Goodbye.